Do I have your attention? 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 Is you taking notes? Hey, what's up, you guys? So what you're going to need today is a Bunt standard size pan, and you're going to need some Pam non-sticking spray. Now, this one is made with baking flour, and to me, it is probably one of the best quality ones they've ever come out with. It doesn't leave your food having some weird aftertaste, so I would definitely suggest try out that brand. So at the bottom of your Bunt pan, you're going to add one stick of unsalted butter. Don't use salted. Make sure it's unsalted. The brand doesn't really matter. And then to that, of course, you're going to add one cup of light brown sugar. If you would prefer to use dark brown, that's completely up to you. It really, truly does not matter. Um, so, of course, if you guys haven't been able to pick up on what we're making today, or if you didn't read that title, yes, we are making a pineapple upside down cake today. Now, there are so many different uh, ways that you can make a pineapple upside down cake. You can make it in the shape of like a sheet cake or you can just do you know a regular size nine by ten baking pan i like to use it in the bunt pan just because i think aesthetically it looks really really pretty um so that's the reason why i'm using this type of pan now just so you know you want to make sure that you have your oven preheated at 350 degrees this recipe does not take long to make at all so make sure that you have your oven already ready to go just as a heads up so the next thing we're doing right now is, so what you do is you get yourself a can of pineapple slices, whole pineapple slices. You literally just cut them in half. That's it. And then, of course, your bun pan is going to naturally have little grooves in them. And you just fit your pineapple slices directly into those little grooves. And you just work your way the whole way around. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not a big fan of pineapple upside down cake just because I think cooked fruit is disgusting and especially hot pineapples. I just, I don't know y'all. I just, I've never really understood the fascination with pineapple upside down cake, but I tell you one thing, I make one hell of a good one and people love it. I think if you're one of those people that love pineapple upside down cake, you are going to absolutely love this recipe. But for some reason, y'all, I just, I can't eat cooked fruit. Like, I'm not like an apple pie person or none of that. But, yeah, you know, anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. Let's get back to what we're supposed to be talking about. So, yeah, so like I said, we're just making our way around this entire bunt pan with um, putting these pineapple slices. Now, this is just a standard size bunt pan. Um, typically, to my knowledge, unless you're getting a mini bunt pan, they all come in one size. I've never seen one much bigger or much smaller than this to my knowledge i'm not sure of the exact measurements i can look it up if you guys need me to um just let me know down in the description box below so then the next thing you're going to add is of course those maraschino cherries now what i like to do is i like to make sure of course make sure you remove all of the stems and then i like to drain all of the juice off of those cherries because what i don't want i don't want the top of my cake to completely turn like bright red you know what i mean so I take off all the stems and then I just drain the juice off. I don't rinse them off. I just drain all of the juice. That way you don't have to worry about too much excess red liquid dripping into your um, your cake. Because to me, it just, I don't know. The maraschino cherries are definitely for a particular type of person. Some people love them. Some people hate them. But I do think if you have way too much of that juice in your cake, it can make it a bit overly sweet and sometimes to me it can make it a bit bitter so that's just a little tip make sure you're draining off as much as that juice as possible so once you've got this all done you can go on ahead and just sit this to the side because now we're going to work on our cake so i don't know if you guys remember or if you guys saw but we did a poll on if you guys wanted me to show you guys how to do it from scratch or homemade so today i'm going to show you guys how to turn this betty crocker super moist butter recipe yellow cake into the best cake ever the first thing you need to do is add yourself in a box of french vanilla jello instant pudding don't get the stuff you got to cook make sure it's the instant pudding you're going to add in three fourths of a cup of melted butter you're going to add in one cup of pineapple juice and then you're going to also add in three large eggs now if you guys get this um video up in those likes and if we get this up to i say at least 5k in likes 
then I will absolutely show you guys how to make it homemade. But I know a lot of people don't have time to be doing cakes homemade. And as much as everybody claims they want to see it homemade, I know everybody's still going to do it by the box. But these are little tips, you guys, that will help you... Um, you know elevate a box cake and honestly by adding in that package of pudding mix it really does step up your cake game and it keeps the cake extremely moist but don't worry towards this end of the video you gonna see a little something something that i'm gonna add to this that's gonna take it up even more honey don't you worry now make sure that you guys are not over mixing it literally i did just enough to make sure that the ingredients were mixed together and then that's it you don't want to end up with a dry tough cake you can fold it in a few times but honestly that's about it so now what we're going to do is we're going to very very easily pour our cake batter into our bump pan now you want to make sure that you're not being too rough right now because you don't want to ruin that beautiful design of those pineapples and those cherries so really take your time with this so what i do is i like to just spatula spatula it in or just take big spoonfuls and put it in and then um just easily easily put it in there because what happens is if you go in too rough and just start throwing the cake batter in, then you're gonna knock over your pineapples or you might crush your cherries and then it won't come out as pretty because of course you're gonna flip this upside down. So a good way to smooth it out is I either get a spatula or you know a spoon, something where you know the batter won't stick to it too much. And then honestly, I just even it out. That's pretty much about it, you guys. This isn't really a hard recipe to make at all don't and like i said i have a little something something that we gonna top this bad boy off within a few moments once it comes out of the oven um but you're gonna pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes um i would say at the 35 minute mark make sure you're checking it every three minutes with the toothpick as soon as your cake comes out clean take it out of the oven don't just set it for 45 minutes and walk away because your oven might not be the same as mine. So keep that in mind. Give it a pat down about three times just to get out any air bubbles and then go ahead and pop it in the oven. So that little trick I was talking about, yeah, you know what it is. It's that Malibu. So what you are going to use is this Malibu pineapple rum. If you can't find the pineapple flavor, that's completely fine. Just use regular Malibu. So mine took about 45 minutes, like I said. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour two-fourths of a cup of that pineapple rum all over the top of this cake. Technically, this is the bottom. But the good thing about doing it this way is that it completely soaks from the bottom down to the top. Now, honey, if you wanna add more, by all means. Now, don't get crazy though because you don't want this cake to be a soggy mess. To me, two fourths of a cup is more than enough. I let it sit for roughly about five or 10 minutes. And then I went ahead and um, got ready to flip it. Now I'm gonna be using, of course, my cake dish. If you don't think that yours is gonna slide out easily, take a little knife and work your way around the side. But watch this, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. This cake comes out so bomb. My, here we go. My God, my God, Jesus. Just look at it love i hope y'all turn up with this cake for the holidays with your family and friends i want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today and look go on ahead and try it out this is the easiest one you guys because this was made from a box but i tell you one thing don't tell nobody honey tell me you made it from scratch you know what i mean mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for tuning in and as always y'all stay cute and take care bye simply food by ty